all I could hear was fire, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up. Right, good morning guys. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. If you are new to the channel, my name is Tristan Mortlock and this is Caps the Vlog. Now today you join me on the coast of Italy. It's a beautiful crisp January morning. We had the weekend off, so no filming on board the boat today. So today I want to talk about the continuation of yachting where we left off. I was just finishing up my time Marina Marbella. So at this stage I had spent five seasons now at Marina Marbella and uh, I was doing handovers for the majority of our English speaking clients, now up to 50, 60, 70 foot. Doing day trips with clients as well, doing client boat rescue, because we managed, I believe, around five, 600 boats. So we had a rescue boat in case, you know, clients got um, caught in a bit of trouble and needed some assistance. And then I was also doing delivery to Italy, because we um, had a dealership uh, for Dominator and Cantiere di Pisa and so on. Um, so towards the last quarter of 2007, I get a phone call from one of Marina Bear's salespeople saying that they had a client who just bought a boat. It was a 78 foot Dominator and he needs a captain to run it for him. Um, you know, we want you to do it. So I was like, sure, yep, yeah, no, no problem, I can do that. So I go meet the client. Um, I recognized him, I met him a few times before because he had smaller boats. He started off with a 24 foot Sea Ray. Then he moved to a 29 foot Sea Ray onto a 58 foot Princess V58. And then finally onto this uh, 78 foot Dominator. So I got chatting to this guy and um, really nice guy. And uh, talking about his what he wants to do with the boat, what he was trying to achieve, and the base of the ultimate goal. So it's a really interesting project, and um, really interesting itinerary. What he wants, a very interesting itinerary, what he wants to do with the boat over the few next few years. So the boat currently is was in um, in Marbella, and it's having some work done to it. Second hand, it's two years old. And it was there for a few weeks and then we took the boat to Port Spanus. And um, the owner pretty much uh, gave to me an unlimited budget. You know, he wanted us to kit out the interior with um, linens, AV systems, you know, towels, uh, kitchen utensils, uh, scatter cushions for the sofas, carpets, rugs, everything you can think of. He wanted it all kitted out, but he wanted the best of everything. So this is, for me, it's brilliant. So we also discussed about the crew. So I said, well, I'm gonna need two additional crew, a stew cook and a deck hand. And he said, yep, no problem. So I find a, a crew members um, and uh, we all start working. And then we start kissing the boat with new toys. So we got two brand new sea bobs. We got a brand new jet ski. We've got um, scuba pro diving equipment all the snorkeling gear, inflatable, um, towable tubes. We had a Avon, I think it was, an Avon jet tender. So all the toys you could possibly imagine. It was, it was fantastic, getting this boat out. And so we were in Port Manus for a couple of months, getting ready, got a new uniform, we put the itinerary together, we did um, servicing and all the equipment, engines, generators, automakers you know the lot and then uh, so the plan was was then to um, <clears throat> take the boat to Morocco this is now the beginning of January no correction this was the yeah this was probably around mid January we take the boat to Morocco to Marina Smear we had hauled out the water we had the hull uh, power washed and then with the anti-fouling 
we changed the anodes and did a few checks to make sure the underside of the hull was all in good condition and ready for the trip. So the plan was to put the boat in the water. Um, at this stage, the boat is privately operated. So the plan was to get the boat in the water, take it to the south of France and get it coded for charter, so MCA coded. So we depart um, Morocco on a evening sometime and then we, we cross over to Spain and then we start making our way. Our first stop was going to be um, Barcelona. So it took a few days to get to Barcelona. We're cruising about I think, 10 or 12 knots. And we get into Barcelona, Port Port Vell. Great city, Barcelona. I do love Barcelona. It's a fantastic city. And uh, the boss came. We had a three or four day trip with the boss around kind of Barcelona, a few of the local it was quite nice, it was quite cool and cold, so it wasn't really uh, swimmable weather. But it was a new toy to him, so he wants to use it as much as possible, which I fully understand. And then they leave the, um, they leave the boat, they fly back to the UK. We go to the fuel station, we fill up the tanks. These tanks would hold 7,000 litres of diesel, so we completely compress the tanks because the plan was to then, the following Monday or Tuesday, when the weather was going to be calm, was to cross the Gulf of Lyon uh, to France, to, uh, to Antibes or Cannes. So, we went to bed, it was a Friday night, it was either the 1st or 2nd of February 2008, and we went to bed, I read normal time around 10 o'clock, maybe 10.30, and the next thing I know is I'm hearing banging and screaming from the outside of the boat. And all I could hear was fire, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up, fire, fire, fire. So we're in a daze, it's probably about 4.35, 5.30 in the morning. And uh, I'm literally in my underwear it's the 2nd of February, it's very cold. Now the crew cabin on this particular boat was behind the engine room and the crew uh, area door opened onto the swim platform. So we get up rushing, the stewardess and the deck hand, they get up and I make myself, we make our way outside the swim platform. We turn around and we see smoke pouring out of the boat. So, Tass, my deck hands, he rushed to the bow of the boat where we kept two fire extinguishers. I rushed back down to the crew mess to grab two additional fire extinguishers. The two chaps who woke us up, I remember it was a captain on the boat, his name was Tom. I think he was American. And I believe the other chap was his mate, who was, um, I think, from New Zealand or Australia, one or the other. They jump on board. We hand them the extinguisher. Tom makes his way to the to the flybridge with Tass, my deck hands. And by this stage, um, we had smoke pouring out of the sun deck. And what happened was um, the access door was made of glass, and from the heat, the glass the glass exploded, allowing the smoke to pour out to give the fire oxygen. So the other chap, I'm really sorry, but I can't remember his name. Um, he and I were on the aft deck and we could feel the heat on the glass on the main door, the main access door. And it went along the lines of, you know, if we open this door, we're going to allow the fire to breathe. And he said, if we don't open it, we can't extinguish it. So the plan was we open the door slightly, stick in the nozzle for the extinguisher and then um, blast the extinguisher. At this stage, the heat radiating off the glass door was, you couldn't, I mean, you, you could probably easily fry an egg on it. It was so warm, it was so hot, and every, everything was happening so quickly. So we deployed the extinguisher, and we realized at this stage it's too late. There's nothing we can do. So we were, I said, everybody off the boat. So the guys who woke us up, Captain Tom and his mate, they jumped onto the dock and they were two boats down. 
So they had to get their boat out of the port, you know, out of the berth, just in case the fire was to spread. And so Tassin got off, Laura's Judas was already off the boat, and I was the last person to step off. And one thing I, re I remember is when I stepped off the boat, as I was stepping off onto the dock, there was this huge explosion. And what it was, it was the aft glass door that this gave way from the heat. I turned around and the glass, the whole door, this door is probably three and a half meters by two meters. This big ball of black smoke kind of like rolls out under the sun deck roof. And then it, all of a sudden it kind of ignites like an explosion. And it, this flame just comes shooting out the back of the boat. So, as, so basically I stepped off the boat, there was this big explosion and this big ball of fire basically came out where I was standing literally three, four seconds before. So we all kind of duck and take cover and then we start kind of realizing that, you know, this is gonna be something massive. So we weren't sure if there was crew or people on the boats next door so we start banging and waking them up and people start getting up and um, you know try and put the fire out and one thing I uh, I do remember by this by this time the boat's engulfed in flames and one thing I do remember is I was looking down the dock and I could see one of the port authorities <laughs> running down the dock with one of those extinguishers on wheels. I was looking at this guy, looking at the boat, and by this thing, by this time it's all in flames. I think to myself, what is this guy doing to do with this extinguisher? But as he's running down the dock, he's looking down, he's not looking up. And he looks up, and I couldn't hear what he said, but I could see what his mouth said. Now his mouth said a, a very rude word in, in Spanish. And I remember this vividly, and he literally dropped the extinguisher, did a 180, and he ran in the opposite direction. The boat to our port side was like an 80 foot sailing boat, and uh, in Port Vale, the boats were very squashed up. So they tried to untie, but they couldn't get out, and they couldn't start their engines for some re unknown, for the reason unknown to me. So they had to um, evacuate their boats and then their boat caught fire and their boat to our starboard side caught fire as well. So by this time the fire brigade had arrived, the fire boats were arriving, and it was, I believe it was, like, like, it was something like 18 firefighting teams attended the, attempted to extinguish the fire. And then the ambulance arrived and they, we were taken in for smoke inhalation and uh, they were given oxygen and just checked. We were fine, really. But when we were being treated in the ambulance, the ambulance driver had put us kind of just off the dock. And he'd left the ambulance to go and see if there's anybody else that needed help. And so we were left with this um, nurse and then at this stage the wind had changed direction and the smoke from the fire was coming down towards the ambulance we realized hold on we're in a dangerous situation here the ambulance started getting filled up with smoke at this stage and the ambulance driver had taken the keys so the nurse had to get out and went running looking for this guy and then he came running back and we managed to get the ambulance out of there into out of harm's way. And um, so that was that. We were all very, very lucky. Um, nobody died, nobody was injured in the fire. 
but the fire resulted in the sinking of four boats, four yachts, ours being the smallest at 78 foot. The boat burnt down all the way to the water line. And I was still in my underwear, so I had no clothing, we had no passports, we had no money, no phone, nothing. However, my deck hands, when he woke up, he had put his jeans on, I remember this, and he had left his phone in his pocket from the day before. And at this stage, it's about six in the morning now, and the only number that I knew off by heart was my old boss's number, Mark, Mark Smith. So I call him at six in the morning, he doesn't answer, I call him again, he doesn't answer, and the third time he answers, he realizes there's something wrong here. So I was still in quite a lot of shock, I was quite shaky, we all were, to be honest. And I said, Mark, the boat's gone, the boat's gone, the boat's gone. He's like, what do you mean? I said, it's a fire, the boat is gone, it's completely gone. And he says, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, you need to phone the boss. I've only had this number. Get him to call me on this number. So, okay, no worries. Um, Lee with me. We'll sort anything out. Is there anything you need? So I said, no, the, 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 everybody's looking after us. We're okay for now. So anyway, Mark, I put the phone down. Mark obviously gets in contact with the owner of the boat, my new boss. And immediately the boss phones me I, I can see his, his number is a UK number so answer first thing he says is everybody okay like everybody's fine he goes Tris it doesn't matter it's an accident everything's gonna be okay and jokingly um, you know he said, well, at least you have the opportunity now to buy a new boat. So, um, I have to say, the, the services, the fire services, the police, the ambulance, they were all fantastic. They were so calm and collected, and they, they made us feel very comfortable. So I want to thank, you know, the Barcelona departments that helped in the fire. So we were then taken away, we were uh, put into a hotel actually by the social services, believe it or not. And then obviously um, the owners got um, the insurance company and there was lawyers and the insurance company obviously immediately sent over a couple of experts and then the owner had organized lawyers for us. And so we go into the lawyer's office, the experts from the insurance company arrive, one of which is the lawyer. And we were interviewed, I remember, in between 12 and 13 hours independently. And we had to write a, a report and he was asking all sorts of questions, you know, do you, to the point where it was, um, I felt almost like I was being attacked things like he said a comment I remember he says so how many months have you been working on boats for and I was like well no I've been doing this profession now coming up five years tell me about your license tell me about your qualifications and then he moved on to does the owner have any enemies I was like no of course not does he have any reason to set fire to this boat I was like no of course not we were literally the crew and I were literally seconds away from death because what kills you in a fire isn't the fire itself, it's the smoke. And this is a, a GRP boat, so glass reinforced plastic, or in other words, fiberglass. And all the resins, the varnishes, all those are chemicals, and when those get turned into smoke, it's very toxic, and that's what kills you in your sleep. So anyway, this, this continued. This, this interview or this interrogation is what it felt like. And over, you know, a period of six months, the insurance company decided there was no foul play, it was an accident. And um, they determined the fire to actually have started, it was an electrical fire, 
which they believe started in the dishwasher in the galley because we put the dishwasher on before we went to bed. Um, and then from, you know, from there, what had happened is, um, obviously I thought, you know, that everybody's okay. It was uh, a very difficult thing to deal with at such a young age. I was 21 at this time. I got my captain's job at 21. I've been working for the guy for about four months and it was pride and joy and I burned it down. You know, I basically killed not only my dream, but his dream. And so, he, the owner of the boat, didn't have a boat, he kept me employed. He had an apartment in my bear, he let me stay in his apartment, he fully employed, no boat. He, we then ordered another boat but it wasn't going to be ready until like June, July time, so it was six months no boat. So he bought a little Sea Ray 270, great little Sea Ray and a Hobie cap. But my whole view after that fire completely changed on boating. It really was an awakening. So for you, for those of you that do work in yachting or are new to yachting, and you, you think the fire drills, anything like that, it's pointless. <laughs> Trust me, from talking from experience, it really isn't. You know, we could have easily lost our lives that day. And we were lucky that at five o'clock in the morning or four, whatever time it was, those two were walking by at that moment and they woke us up. So, Captain Tom and the mate, I'm so sorry I can't remember your name. If you are watching, I want to thank you both for helping us. And I want to thank you both for basically, no, I want to thank you guys for saving our lives. So guys, I'm going to stop this video here and um, the next episode will be the final episode of this series. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the channel. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Please click that like button. And if you have any questions or comments, please um, do so in the comments box below. So for now, this is Captain's Vlog, and I look forward to catching up with you guys next episode.